Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton on this Friday. Friday. Last day of the five-day week that is part of the seven-day week that is part of the 31-day month that's part of the 365-day year. But I'm not going to go any farther than that. Sounds a little bit like something out of that play that uh, everybody experiences in high school, Our Town, right? Yeah. Where, where the little girl's talking about where she lives, and she goes from uh, from her address to her uh, to her city to her county or, or her city, uh, yeah, city to her county to her state to the United States to Earth to, uh, blah, 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 out to the eye of God. <laughs> I always appreciated that. Uh. Good morning. Good morning. Not moving all that quickly yet this morning. It is uh, overcast. We're supposed to have uh, dangerous fog today, but I'm not seeing that at the moment. Um, not that it isn't elsewhere. Um, fog's one of those things that's kind of localized at times, and it's kind of hard to to tell. But I'm glad you're here with us. There's no fog here other than in my brain. <sighs> And uh, yeah, 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 overcast, cold, uh, 30, temperatures right around, hovering just below freezing. Uh, I don't see any freezing rain or anything either. So um, yeah, so let's uh, let's see who's with us this morning. Um, wow, it actually looks like it's halfway. I did a refresh and now it looks like it's updating the way it should. You know, Facebook is just a fickle thing. And maybe it's a setting I've got somewhere. I don't, I don't. But good morning. Uh, Mushtaq, good evening. Yeah, happy anniversary to you and your beloved. Uh, that is a glory. 25 years, huh? That's a blessing. That is a blessing, my friend. I don't know how, how things are in uh, the culture that you're in, uh, but America had become for a long time uh, a, a divorce uh, culture, I'll say. Um, people would get married and say, well, well, you know, if it doesn't work out, we'll just get divorced. But that's not the way God intended it. Um, he intended it the way he gave it to us in Adam and Eve and the way that uh, um, uh, the way that the Lord speaks of it twice, or at least in two different gospels um, uh, in our in 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 the scriptures. Um, and that is one man, one woman, and, and bound for life together. So 25 years is, is wonderful. Um, but what a blessing. What a blessing. Through thick and thin, you know. Um, it's changing here in America. Well, we were changing. We actually had gotten to the point where um, divorce was on the decline. That is to say that, that less than half marriage, half of marriages uh, wound up in divorce. But now we're into this whole... I don't know if I'm a boy. I don't know if I'm a girl. And what does marriage mean anyway? Well, we make we make the mistake. The, the human reason makes the mistake of thinking that we define marriage. And the truth is that marriage was revealed to us in the beginning when uh, Eve was given to Adam as a as a helpmate. And someday we can talk more about that. Uh, but I don't want to go into a rant today. Glenn, good morning, my dear brother-in-law. How are you today? How are you? Uh, uh, Michael, good morning. Fabulous Friday from Karen and Mike. Yep, yep, it is. It is ow, all of a sudden I got a pain right here. Hope I haven't got a toothache for me or something. And or, Debbie, well, Ann, Deb, Grant, good morning to you guys. Um, Renee, good morning. All gray and damp. Quite warm snow is melting fast. Yeah, our snow has been melting. Our, you know, we 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 put Ryder out because he's such a small dog, um, you know, and and uh, he's got things he needs to do out in the yard, regardless of whether there's snow or not. And so we shovel him out an area, and the the piles from the snow in the area we shovel him out is it's probably an area that's 20, 25 feet in a circle. And that snow piled up makes a nice little fence, so then you don't have to put him on his leash. You just set him down, and he's not going anywhere. He's inside snow walls. I mean, he could climb them if he wanted to, but he's a good dog. We keep an eye on him. Um, uh, but I haven't been out there yet, but Bonnie said last night that, that those are going away. And now we got to put him on the leash again. And, of course, 
if the snow on the ground is gone, then it's mud underneath it. Look, and you know about that, Renee. I know you do. <laughs> I know your dogs. Ashley, good morning. Verna, good morning. Uh, and uh, Jerry, good morning. 55 and balmy, yeah. Beautiful milestone tree. Yes, 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 it is. It is. It is a milestone. Uh, Bonnie says it's 29 here. Cloudy and gray. Uh, yeah, cooling down from yesterday. It's actually, I don't know, the, the high and the low for today looked weird because we were at, when I looked at my, my uh, uh, weather app this morning, we were at 32. It looked like the high for today was 30. And the low was like two, um, and I, it's, I think I don't know. I haven't, I haven't watched a meteorologist in a long time. But I, I think what's happening is our temperatures are going to drop throughout the day. Uh, we're going to get cold again. But then I was looking further out, and it looks like during the daytime we're going to be at this 28 to 32 range, 25 to 30 range for the next week or so. Um, you know, I expect this mid-January, like the January thaw, um, but I, I didn't expect it right at New Year's. In fact, quite often New Year's is some, uh, some of the coldest weather of the end of the year. So anyway, all right. So that's good morning to all of you guys that have chimed in here. Um, and, and good morning to those who are behind the scenes just watching. And uh, good morning and hello to those who are watching throughout the day, whether it's here or over on my YouTube channel when I repost it there. Glad to have you with us. Spend a little time in the Lord's Word on this Friday, December 30th. It's interesting, my, my YouTube channel is not doing anything. I think I've got two subscribers and, and uh, uh, two subscribers and, um, I don't know, some some viewers you know but here we there's there's we're working our way up to 200 in this little community um not that everybody's here every day but you know that they're associated with this um there's anywhere from nine to uh 18 19 of us here um daily uh just it's a range you know um but it, this is you know i mean it's not like some of these people that have hundreds of people watching them this is uh this is more like a an internet i'm going to call it an internet community church bible study it's like going to your to your local country church and there's there's uh 25 30 people in the pews um on sunday but there's a couple hundred there on christmas day you know that kind of thing anyway <clears throat> all right no commemorations today bonnie Mart remarked yesterday that it seems like this week is full of commemorations but there's none uh today or tomorrow of course tomorrow is is the um eve of the circumcision of jesus uh january or uh, being december 31st new year's eve um but let's let's get down to today um i have my treasury of daily prayer right here um you can acquire these through Concordia Publishing House if you'd like your own. They, they come in in a floppy cover like this one. Uh, they come in a hard cover, and they come in a, in a smaller version, too. I bought the big one back when I bought it because I, I, I like to have substance. My Bible is a, is a big Bible, too. I like that. Well, the words are bigger. Let's put it that way. I'm planning for the future, and the future is soon. So if you, uh, if you have Lutheran Service Book, page 295, there you find daily prayer for individuals and families, the morning order. So with all of that said, we begin each day here in this little piece of liturgy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips. My mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And by the way, I'm still talking with Pastor Jerbuck about having him in here again another uh, day. Fridays seem to be the ones that work out, but then through the holidays, Fridays haven't worked out. And he's kind of doing the same thing I am. I mean, he's still working, but he's lying low and uh, he hasn't been. Well, he's been in those places that I go where there isn't any internet service. Um, 
which makes it a little more challenging. So maybe, maybe in the coming weeks here. All right, our, our psalm today, Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 14 through 18. So it's kind of a <clears throat> kind of a confusing mess here a little bit. They selected verses here. <clears throat> I feel a little bit of a, give me a second here. <clears throat> a little gooing going on. All right. Psalm 89. I will sing, oh, I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. And my mouth will, with my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens, you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, I will establish your offspring forever. And I will build your throne for all generations. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face who exalt in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We have a lengthy Old Testament reading coming, so I, I feel like I should minimize here what I'm saying about this psalm. Uh, um, but I just verse 3, you have said, which is, is God, God has said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant, I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. And that is that is that is the promise we have in Christ Jesus. That's the promise that's fulfilled in the in the birth and death and resurrection of Christ. This this is the throne upon which he reigns, the throne of the cross, uh, suffering and dying for you and I as as a, the suffering servant that we read of in Isaiah um, and as a, as a king who suffers for the sake of his of his people. Um, and so uh, you are the glory of strength. Your favor is exalted, and our shield belongs to the Lord. That is a that's that's almost a military term. Uh, well, no, it is it is military language. Our shield belongs to the Lord, the, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. That's a, 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 a oath of fidelity, uh, of faithfulness to uh, to one's King, Lord and and Master over all. Uh, and the Holy One of Israel is our Lord Christ. All right, that's I'm going to leave the psalm there, and we're going to we're going to jump to Isaiah now. Like I said, lengthy Isaiah 58, beginning at the first verse, going through 59, the third verse, and then picking up 14 through 21 as well. Um, why they, you know, how how the decision was made to select these specific verses, I don't know. You got to start somewhere. You got to end somewhere. And I know whenever I've picked readings for something, <clears throat> I always try to keep those readings into a concise thought. Um, well, not maybe concise, but the, the whole thought uh, is included in it. So I assume, um, I assume, I, I, I presume, I guess I would say, um, that the, the editors for this, well, you know, it's not even the editors for this, because this is actually, if you, if you were to grab your, ah, if you were to grab your Lutheran service book, um, your, your hymnal, the, the Missouri Synod's current hymnal, um, not that you can't use the other ones, but because we have Lutheran, we have uh, Lutheran worship out there and we have um, um, uh, TLH is still out there, the Lutheran hymnal. But this is Lutheran service book published in 06 and, and used from then on. Um, and actually, this is like 96, 97 percent acceptance in our church compared to other hymnals, which is good. Um, but in here, there is a daily lectionary, uh, daily readings, and that's what that's what this is. Um, and in fact, if you if you are a member of a congregation, I got to put this back up here now. If you're a member of a congregation that um, uses the 
bulletin inserts, um, on the bottom of the bulletin inserts are the, are the readings that are the daily lectionary. Um, you really wanted to know that, didn't you? I'm glad you, I'm glad you did so I could share it with you. All right, let's get to the text. Let's get to Isaiah 58, verse 1 and following. Um, once again, just as a side note, this is all written, uh, except for verse 20, uh, verse 21, Wow, that's just verse 21. That's long. Except for verse 21, this is all written um, in the in the poetical form in that staggered, indented, oh, excuse me, indented paragraph. So remember, this is all poetry. Okay, so this is some of its imagery rather than literal stuff. So, all right, 58.1. Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted and see you not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no, advantage, no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed? and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him. Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is not it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him? and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up to the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable. You honor it, not going your way, your own ways, or seeking your own pleasure, or taking idly, talking idly. Then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Pause. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, or his ear dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear, for your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue mutters wickedness. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far away. For truth has stumbled in the public squares, and uprightness cannot enter in. 
truth is lacking. He who departs from evil makes himself a prey. The Lord saw it and is displeased, and it displeased. <laughs> the Lord saw it and it displeased him, and there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought him salvation and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, so he will repay. Wrath to his adversaries, repayment to his enemies. To the coastlands he will render repayment. So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. For he will come like a rushing stream which the wind of the Lord drives. And a redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit that is upon you, and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth, or out of the mouth of your offspring, or out of the mouth of your children's offsprings, says the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I told you it was long. You knew that. A little repetitive at times, too. Um, let's see here. The problem with this mug is that the coffee gets way down inside there, and then I have to really tip it to get to it. Actually, this is an ideal shape for a mug, by the way, for a coffee mug. Coffee mug should tape, should be deep and taper, not wide and soup bowlish. That way the heat stays in. It retains more heat when it's a narrower cup. They say Bowdoin China is the best. but So if we go back here to the beginning of this, um, it begins Isaiah, well, the Lord, uh, is the Lord having a conversation with Isaiah, or is he having a conversation with the people? So, cry aloud and do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. And the, and the last part is a, is a repetition. Well, actually, okay. Cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. That's a couplet. Right? It's saying the same thing. Speak boldly. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. Another couplet. Right, So he is speaking loudly, declaring transgression and sin of the house of Jacob. Okay? That's, those, 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 that, that's one verse, two couplets, for those that are literary majors. I'm not, but I picked up enough in ninth grade English to understand these things. Have you ever read Shakespeare? Um, verse 2 Yet they seek me delight daily and delight to know my ways. As if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask me, ask of me righteous judgments and they delight to draw near to God. So uh, in another place it says, within, in, was it? No, I can't remember. I've got, I'm going to paraphrase guys and I don't remember where it is exactly. Um, but it was, it's with vain lips that they call upon my name, or something to that effect. They're, they're coming to the temple, um, going through the motions of faithfulness, right? Even as at home, they're idolatrously worshiping their idols. Uh, they, then they come to the, to the temple, and they offer up their offerings and call on God, right? So they're, they're, they're going through the actions, Daily they seek me and delight to know my ways, right? So, so they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do um, as if, right? That's a comparative. As if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of God. So at home, they're doing their own thing. They go to the temple and they worship God. And, 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 one of them is a facade, or both, right? 
Because you, you can't be faithful to God and disloyal to God in idolatry and unfaithfulness, right? That, that's contradictory. So they go to God seeking his blessing, but ignoring his judgment. So then why, they ask, why have we fasted and don't see you? Why have we humbled ourselves and you act like you don't pay attention to it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to hit with a wicked fist. My time of fasting is so much better than your time of fasting. I do things so much more pleasing to God than you do. I don't do anything. I sit on my barca lounger and I relax. And I, I do no work while my servants take care of all things. Which means he didn't actually fast. Right? So then God asks the question, is, is, is this the fast that I choose? God says, a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ash under him? Is this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Right? Is it, is it going through the motions that God wants? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, to cover the naked, to hide yourself from your own flesh? This is what God does. Uh, the, the, if you're fasting, is it is it is it any kind of sacrifice? If you're fasting, if the food that you would have eaten that day remains with you to eat on another day, or is it a fast if you take the food that you hunger for that you would have eaten that day and give it to someone who has not? Or if you uh, go to those who have offended you and forget, loosing the bonds of oppression. If you take the clothing, the fine clothing that you would have worn on that day and use it to cover the naked, then shall your light break forth like the dawn. Your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And you will call on the Lord and he will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, here I am. See, that's the thing. Israel has spent so many decades during the, during the, the from the reign of King David to the time of Isaiah, and Ezekiel, and Jeremiah, um, going through the motions, right? When they first came, they were faithful, but good Lord, friends, go read the book of Judges and just see how, how, Quickly they fell. As soon as Joshua died, they're into all kinds of idiocy because they're like us. They're stupid, sinful human creatures. Because we do it too. Don't don't say you don't. Don't say you don't. I'm not accusing. I'm stating a fact. There is no one who is perfect. And he goes on to say that that having done these things then all if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted then your light rises in the darkest and your gloom is the noonday and your lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places right he'll give to you all things when you share those things that he gives to you with those who have need right and when you don't go through the motions but you actually do the things that god has given you to do if you turn your back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day and call it the Sabbath a delight and the holy and the holy day of the Lord honorable, 
yeah, Sabbath is a big one. Now, our Sabbath is now found in Christ. Um, and yet we still need a, a time set aside to spend in the Lord. And we do that every morning here, I know. But there's also a more important time, right? The time to receive the, the gifts of God in, uh, in the divine service. The forgiveness of sins. Um, to receive that, that declaration of the promise of the forgiveness of sins. To have your sins forgiven by God's called and ordained man. To, to witness the baptism of, of people into the body of Christ. And to receive the preaching and the teaching of the word. To strengthen the Holy Spirit in us. To guide us and lead us. And, and to receive the holy meal of God's body and blood in Christ's sacrament, in his holy supper. It's easy to say, well, you know, Sabbath is done. It's not commanded anymore, so I can do whatever I want. And it's such a burden to go to church on Sunday morning or Wednesday night or Saturday night or whatever, if you have other than Sunday mornings. It's such a burden. So I'm not going to go, God doesn't want to burden me with these things. Well, no, he doesn't. You're right. You're absolutely right. He doesn't want to burden me with these things. Right? But don't view it as a burden. View it as a gift. View it as a, a gift. Right? When you go into a restaurant and order a meal, you're going to pay for it. I know that. The worker deserves his wages. But do you view your order as a burden to the cook? And does the cook view it as a burden to him that he's preparing your meal? If he does, is it good? But if you view it as asking for a gift from the cook and the cook views it as giving you the gift of those things that you wanted, isn't it more pleasant and beautiful for both? I just came up with that, by the way. I should write that down. I will, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, chapter 59 begins, and it's all about judgment and redemption. And I'm going to say the same things again in a different way. So I'm going to choose to skip over them today. I'm going to point just to this right here. Um, uh, I got to find it again. Uh, the Lord saw it. This is the midst of verse 15. The Lord saw it and it displeased him and there was no justice. He saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought him salvation and his righteousness upheld him. He put on righteousness as a breastplate, helmet of salvation, blah, 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 blah. Wrapped himself in zeal according to his deeds, wrath of his advert. So shall the fear of the name of the Lord, so they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. But this is the coming of Christ. God looks down upon the people and says, there is no one there to intercede for them. And he sends Christ to be our intercessor, to stand between us and, and his wrath. And it, it's not done by anything but God himself. His own right arm, his own arm brought salvation, right? And so then this whole section, well, at verse 20, and the Redeemer will come to Zion. To those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord. It's the coming of the Christ. It's the coming of the Lord. The, the ancient Israelites believed in the coming of Christ. They didn't know his name was going to be Jesus. Um, they know from, from uh, the Isaiah text that his name will be Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, is that? Yeah, yeah that's Isaiah. Um, and they know that, that that Lord will come from a virgin. And they know that the time will come when it is right. But they don't know when. And so from from the beginning, even before the time of Abraham, but from Abraham on, the expectation of the coming of the seed of the woman, the, the, the Messiah, the, the promised Lord, the Christ, is, is known. And it, and it is a promise from God. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit is upon you. 
and my words that I have put in your mouth, this is speaking to Isaiah now, shall not depart out of your mouth or out of your mouth of your offspring or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, says the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Isaiah will preach and teach this. The people of Israel who are faithful will believe it and teach it. And this is a covenant. This is a promise. This is a testament. This is God's will. My spirit that is upon you, my words I put in your mouth. And we live under that today too. Okay, so what is this for me? What is this today? This is a, 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 a an ongoing call. Remember, I said we can't lose the Old Testament stuff because it's important. This is the on call, ongoing call of God from the beginning of time, from the beginning of history, throughout the history of Israel, to be faithful. Not to do one thing in our daily life and then show up and do another thing thinking that it's different and, and, and that we can be this person now and this person later. Either you're in Christ, if you're in, you're in 100%, or you're out of Christ, and if you're out, you're either awaiting repentance and forgiveness, or you've denied him. There's no two ways about it. There's no middle ground. You can't have your cake and eat it too. But because we are fallen creatures, Christ died for us. So that when we find ourselves living our lifestyle in two ways, God calls us back to the one which he has promised and given us, and he forgives the other one, that we might live in him eternally. Friends, Christ is the greatest gift that anyone could ever receive. And he's the greatest gift that our Lord has ever given us, that our Heavenly Father has ever given us. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and the promise of life everlasting. As the year comes to a close, think about that. Think about where your life does goes to the wrong side and where it goes to the right side and where you, growing in Christ, can find yourself more here and less here because that's what he desires of you. Not that that saves you. You're saved purely by the blood of Christ shed upon the cross. But it is in these places that he gives you the strength to look at these things and say, foolishness. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Got to find it here on this Friday morning. I better do this little lubrication here. Father God, the Lord of fulfillment, thank you for this Friday, the day in which you completed your creation. Pause. I forgot some stuff. Moving too fast. The Apostles' Creed. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Heavenly Father and by His Son taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now to the little prayer book. For this Friday morning, Father God, Lord of fulfillment, thank you for this Friday, the day in which you completed your creation, crowning it with the presence of human beings. Thank you for the joy of the work that was carried out during this entire week and for being able to place what I have been doing all week long in, the, in a good light. 
Help me to put forth my best to complete all that I have set out to accomplish this week. I know that without your help, I can, or with your help, I can accomplish it. In this day, I can value life you have given me in all its aspects, physical, emotional, and spiritual. I can do this because this is the day of man's creation and Christ's death, a death so that we have your pardon and peace. May the joy of knowing that I am created and saved by you cause me to live a new life guided by your Holy Spirit. Lord of this Friday, stay with me so that we can enjoy this day together. You have thought of me, and I also want to think of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you do not forget those who call upon your name. All of creation belongs to you, and all of it is known to you. We ask, O Lord, that you hear the prayers, our prayers, and the prayers of those who suffer in body, soul, or mind, whether it be illness or aging or the effects of injury. We ask, Lord, especially this day for those who have asked for our prayers, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Jeremy, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, and all who call upon your most holy name. Grant them, Lord, by the promises of your covenant, your holy comfort and assurance, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew. We implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, uh, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Well, my friends, that brings our... Oh, hi, Ashley. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Prayers for Brian. We'll, we will add... Well, of course, we, we pray for Brian as well, Lord, that you, that you may uh, care for him and that you may uh, give wisdom to his doctors and caregivers. Amen. Um, and Connie, good morning. I had to refresh my screen, and I, I, then I saw Connie and Robin here and uh, Ashley after I was all done. Uh, so uh, good morning to you guys. Um, and God's peace be with you. Tomorrow, uh, Saturday morning, we'll be back here for our daily devotions on New Year's Eve day. Um, in the meantime, be safe. If you go out and it's icy, be careful. Um, if you don't go out, be safe and, and live in God's peace. That peace be with you, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Mm -hmm.